good afternoon and welcome welcome everyone to uh, our Wednesday night study here at uh, Stand Fast, our Wednesday night live, as I like to call it. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here with us, and it's always a pleasure uh, to study God's word. Uh, many people don't get this opportunity that we do or have the freedom that we do to uh, study and, and worship our God, our Lord. Uh, there's people in other countries that are fighting major battles uh, just to read the Bible. So let us all be thankful and grateful um, that we are where God positioned us. You know what I mean? So it's a blessing. So I hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, it's been a little hot these last few days, but you know, that's Sacramento for you. It'll be hot all the way into November, you know, sometimes December. And then all of a sudden it'll get cold and then it'll start raining and then it just goes over and over. So I'm just enjoying whatever uh, the day brings, uh, if you will. Uh, let us start with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for uh, bringing us here again to study your word. Father, I pray that uh, you give us ears to hear and eyes to see and the ability to understand what you are uh, teaching us, Lord. Father, it's, it's so just important and we're so grateful that we have you, Holy Spirit, to eliminate your word to us, to explain it to us, to teach it to us, to help us to understand it. <clears throat> so Father, we just thank you so much. Uh, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Uh, we thank you for the position you have us in. Father, and we just pray that you continue to keep us and be a fence around us, Lord. We love you. We say this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So hope everybody's doing well out there. If you guys uh, need anything, like I said, don't hesitate to call or text uh, or email or whatever. You know the, the ways of getting a hold of us uh, here at Stand Fast. So uh, again, I want to start pushing the website. So if you guys get a chance, I'm going to start uploading more stuff to it. I've kind of neglected it unfortunately, uh, over the last few months. So uh, it's standfast365.com. Stand, S-T-A-N-D-F-A-S-T, 365.com. Uh, if you forget, you can always see it. I think I have links to it on the YouTube page and the uh, Facebook page, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyways, get on there. And what I want to share with you guys is that I'm going to start doing a series of uh, I'm, I'm going to really dedicate time to the Facebook page for Stand Fast. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm going to clean up some of the stuff that's on there. I have a lot of old sermons that uh, I'm, I'm going to take down. And uh, I'm a, because the quality and everything of our video production of, uh, has gotten better, so I want to kind of start going forward with newer stuff. I'm not going to take them all down, but a good number of them, and then uh, just start making the channel look better, um, really focus in on my sermons. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to do. So what I want to have, I'm going to have different sections on the website. I'm going to have one that basically will have the sermons, uh, and then one that may have the Wednesday studies. And then I'm going to have another section where it's, I do like the, say, 10-minute, 15-minute exposés on certain certain Christian subjects that people may may struggle with. So case in point, and this is something that I want to record instead of like writing stuff down that can get lost in a in an attic or in a storage. You know, years after I'm gone, you know, I want the people to be able to go on and look at some of the videos and still see some of the teach some of my teachings. Case in point. I'll often think about this, like with my grandkids and even like the younger people, including my son, daughter-in-law, I mean, nieces, nephews. Um, they're going to run into different questions and different obstacles um, when they get older, especially when they get to college. Because I see a lot of kids walk away from their faith when they go from high school to college. Because when they get to college, they get start getting all these different things from different people that they're meeting from different parts of the world, filling their heads with a bunch of nonsense. And that's what, how Satan works. So then they start doubting what they've learned all their life. So that's why I want to put down this foundation. It'll be on YouTube. Um, and I'm, I'm going to figure out a way to, to preserve it. But anyways, um, one subject may be contradictions in the Bible. 
Because that's when you get people that are non-Christians that have come in and say, well, how come you, the Bible's fake? It was written by man. And then why, there, why is there contradictions in there? So that can make somebody stumble. Another one would be uh, Christianity is a white religion. It was used against uh, slaves. It was So, you know, black folks shouldn't uh, worship Jesus because of this and that. Uh, and I'm going to cover all that and how all that is nonsense. Because when the Bible was written, uh, there was no United States. I mean, for, you know, over a thousand years uh, before anybody even set foot uh, on uh, North America or at least, yeah, as far as I know, North America. So it couldn't be a white religion, but a lot of people will get tripped up. So you get these Hebrew Israelites and some Muslims, Nation of Islam, that will come and say, you know, uh, our forefathers were slaves and they beat Christianity into us. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth. But the thing is, um, just making sure my mic is on. The thing is, um, it can cause somebody to stumble if they're not grounded. So I want to address all this. Some people will say they'll come up with this swoon theory or this theory that Jesus didn't actually die on the cross, that someone came and took his body, the disciples took his, his body outside of the tomb and then made it look like he uh, was resurrected and got up and, and stepped out on his own. So they, they come up with these different theories. One's called the swoon theory. Uh, there's a couple other ones. But anyways, it's just lies that people make up to try to get people away from Christianity. And keep in mind, they were saying that during the time of the Bible. They didn't want Christianity to be right. But uh, I'm, I'm going in depth on this. Uh, and it's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. So you'll be able to refute uh, a lot of the stuff that these guys say uh, when it comes to uh, trying to downplay uh, the Bible and they'll say I was written by man so how could it be this that and the other so anyways I'm gonna do a series of just different topics and then hopefully they'll stand you know they'll stand withstand the the, the, the test of time um, because it's all biblical it's not, not that I'm making up it's stuff that I can show in the scriptures or history has recorded certain events so I just want to do that so that'll be on there so if you guys run into somebody that says well, Christianity is not even a real religion because it was taken from this ancient pagan religion that had a mother that had a son and blah, blah, this, that, and the other. They try to say that Christianity was took from that or bit off of that and then just changed the names to Mary, uh, Joseph, and, and Christ, and Jesus. And that's not true either. So um, I'm just going to refute all that. And, and again, it's not me. I'm not like the Bible answer man, but there's some really good theologians online that refuted all this. So basically the work is easy. All I have to do is just, you know, go to what they did um, and then take from that. Um, so it's really good. So I'm, I'm going to do that. That's going to be on their Lord willing. Um, so I look forward to that. I'll definitely let you guys know when that happens. Uh, you guys may have some kids going to uh, college now, kids or grandkids. So uh, they're going to get these, these type of, um, this type of opposition for their faith. Um, how can that be true? This, that, and the other. And well, all religions are good. Uh, coexist. Can we coexist? You know, there's many ways to lead to heaven and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, that will be on there. I need to get started on that sooner than later. So um, I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, if there's any subjects too that you would like uh, for me to address, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'd love because there's going to be some stuff that I may forget or that I may uh, leave out. So definitely let me know and I can do the research. I know I have, you know, some good um, resources that I tap into when I do like deep study on stuff or if I'm about to do a sermon or do a presentation online. Um, I research people. I'll call people. Um, email people, this, that, and the other, just people that have either already did, you know, a good job on a particular subject or someone I may not even know, but I'll reach out and say, hey, um, you know, John Page, pastor at Stand Fast, I'm doing this, 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 and this. Can you help me with this? Or what did, you know, what's your, you know, findings on this or whatever? So it's all, we're all a big family. So it doesn't matter, um, you know, as we reach out to others that are more seasoned in the faith to 
uh, reach out for help and assistance. That's what that's what we're here for. That's what Christianity is about. You know, uh, helping each other out. Um, today, I was going to talk just briefly on uh, just being saved and, and where we are as Gentiles in our walk with God. Um, right now, you guys know that Israel just got bombed or they attempted to bomb Israel. What was it yesterday? Maybe day before. I can't remember. Um, Iran did supposedly. And um, I think it got thwarted. But I, I see a lot of stuff online talking about, oh, it's in time. See, in the Bible, it says that God's people will be attacked by this, this, that, and the other, whatever. And I, I still say hogwash. You know, they've been fighting over there since the beginning of time, uh, and then now is no different. You know, my eschatology, which is the end times, my belief is that, well, I'm not going to get, because that's, that's going to open up a whole other can of worms, and I, I'll gladly address it. Uh, if you guys would like. Um, but my whole point with this is, um, is Israel being attacked because they have ties to God or had ties to God? Uh, probably so. But you've got to remember, Israel, I always say this, Israel is not a godly country right now. Okay, uh, so just remember that. So prophecy can't be true because right now you have one pagan nation attacking another pagan nation. So how can that be prophetic? Okay, a lot of people don't understand certain scriptures, so that's why they say certain things. They, like I said on this past sermon, that people will read stuff literally when it should be read figuratively. And that's what happens in the book of Revelation. So I'm not going to get into that right at this moment, but my whole point is there is less than, what did I say before, like less than 1% or 2% Christians in Israel. So that means 90, at least 98 or 97% of the country is pagans. So having said that, how is God going to be behind and back a pagan nation? Um, he never has. I've never seen or heard of where he backed a pagan nation. Israel at one point, the people of Israel were God's chosen people because he had a specific request. He had a specific job for them to do. And it was fulfilled uh, when Christ came. So the, his, his purpose for the Jews back in the day was to bear his son. And so he gave the law to them. He protected them uh, during much of the time. Um, he guided them. He gave them prophets. And then ultimately his son was born through uh, that line of people. Well, that's why they were chosen people. Well, Jesus has already been here, lived, uh, was crucified, resurrected three days later, and ascended back into heaven. So now that changed the whole landscape of things. So now we don't have a theocracy where you have God running um, a, a whole nation or leading a whole nation. Because uh, remember, they gave that up when they said, we want a king, when they, they asked for King Saul, or they asked for a king and God gave them King Saul. And God warned them too. He even told uh, Samuel, okay, I'll, I'll let you guys have a king, but you warn them before I do this, go, you go warn them and tell them what's going to happen from their request. I'm going to let them, you know, dig themselves a hole, but just know that. So anyways, when Jesus came, that ended that whole uh, form of, uh, well, actually, Jesus ushered in the New Testament. So now we're under the new law, the new covenant. Uh, we're in the kingdom of God. So now once Jesus came, everyone that professes the name of Christ, which was sent by God, is a part of that family. So it could be Jewish people, which there are Jewish people that are Christians, uh, it could be anyone from uh, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Latin, uh, black, white, you name it, uh, as all a part of the body of Christ. So you remember, you can almost say that Christianity is a colorblind religion. Uh, there's either black or white, either you're in Christ or you're not. So you got to remember, everything with us is spiritual. So remember, we, we are spiritual Jews. We, we, we got circumcised, our hearts got circumcised, the Bible says. So we don't get circumcised physically. I mean, though we do like when most males are born, which we should. But what I'm saying is we don't do it for the same religious reasons that the Jews did it back in the day. 
The Bible says now that we are, our hearts are circumcised. So we're spiritual Jews. That's what the Bible says. It's not what I said. Well, I say it, but uh, that's what the Bible told me to say. So once Jesus came, he ushered in the new covenant and he ushered in the kingdom of God. So now we're in the time where we're in the kingdom of God. Because if you notice, I've mentioned this before, church, where um, in the New Testament, it doesn't say to go out and proselytize people. It doesn't say to go out and try to convert uh, the, the uh, uh, Amalekites over to, uh, uh, to, to be Jews or to, to, be, uh, to follow the Hebrews. Um, it was, this is what I want you to do. You're my people. And keep in mind, church, it wasn't just Jews that were the Israelites or it wasn't just Israelites that were Jews. I'm not sure how I can say that. So in other words, you could be from any tribe. You could be black, white, or from wherever. Even in the Old Testament, you didn't have to be of Jewish or Hebrew blood to be um, considered a Jew and part of, uh, of, of Israel. So keep that in mind. It wasn't, I want this race of people to be my people. No, he just went to them and gave them the layout. Now, anybody else that came in, you could be, you're a part of Israel. And no matter what color you are or what nationality or anything, but this is what you have to adhere to. Basically, we have the law of Moses and this, that, and the other. We do the whole sacrificial uh, thing. So as long as you follow through with that and follow our customs and follow our God um, and have faith in our God, then you were considered part of Israel. Uh, a lot of people say that uh, Job wasn't, wasn't uh, Hebrew, that he was Asian. Uh, and there was a few other ones too. I can't think of who offhand, but it's not important. So I don't really go into that, like who was this? What nationality was this? Because it's not important to me. All that's important to me was names and faith. That's it. That's all that matters. Because again, our spirits don't uh, have any type of skin tone or nationality. Okay. All, all of our spirits were created from God. And God is not a nationality either. So therefore, our bodies are a certain way, but our spirits are all of God. Either you're of Christ or you're not. So that's my whole point. So uh, I pray for Israel. Uh, I, I, there are Christians that, uh, and actually there are more Christians, Jewish people that are Christians in the United States than in Israel. That's what I heard someone say. I can't tell you that offhand, but I have heard that from a reliable source that there are more Christian Jews in the United States than in Israel. So having said that, uh, the fighting over there is bad. Uh, I feel for the Jewish people. I feel for the um, Palestinian people. Uh, you know, I, I, it's unfortunate that innocent people got to get killed on both sides. I really wish they could get it together. But I'm not going to pray for one side over the other. And that goes for Jews to Palestinians or vice versa. I don't want people from Iran, innocent people from Iran getting bombed. You know, I don't want their kids and, and people that have nothing to do with all that nonsense over there to get bombed. They deserve uh, uh, to, to live like we do, you know, because the, the, there are some Christians in Iran. There are some Christians in Palestine. We just, the news make it seem like they're all, everybody, even the kids are all like these radical Muslims. It's not like that. Sure, there are some there like that, but I mean, there's radical people in the United States. Look at this uh, Christian nationalism. Look at these people shooting up these schools. I'm sure people in Iran are looking at the people in the United States like, them people are crazy. I would want to live over there. I mean, you know, I'm sure they are. We're a laughingstock because of these little idiots that are going into these schools shooting them up. So my whole point, church, is uh, Israel... Israel's relationship with God was conditional. He said, if you do this, I will do this. If you follow me and stop following these other gods, I will bless you. If not, I will curse you. Simple as that. I mean, that's in a nutshell. I'm going to read a little bit from the book of Romans as it talks about, um, as it talks about Israel's unbelief and then uh, the message of salvation. I'm going to start with the ninth chapter of Romans, and I'm going to read uh, verse 30, uh, 30 and like 31. I'm not sure how high it goes. 33. It reads, What shall we say then? The Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it. Okay, now this is Paul talking. 
um, that is a righteousness that is by faith, but that Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. So what Paul is saying is the Gentiles try to reach righteousness. We do it by faith. So the Gentiles didn't come into this trying to, and Gentile is anybody that's other than Jew, Jewish. So we attain it by faith. So we are justified by faith, which I'm going to get into in a minute. Uh, in the Old Testament, people try to attain perfection by obedience and by works, if you will. And we know that the law wasn't put here so that we could follow the Ten Commandments. If we could do it, that's great, but no one can except Jesus. So the law was given to us to show that we do need a savior. You see what I'm going is without the law, how would we know that we need a savior or how wretched we are? That's why God gave us the law. So he says, look, guys, this is what I expect from you guys. Here's the commandments. Oh, yeah, we can't do this. I know you can't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat for you. I'm going to send my son down and just accept him, be a part of his family, which is a part of my family, and I will graft you in. I will bring you in. It's that simple. There's nothing you can do that's going to be good enough. But once you are in the family, you are expected to behave a certain way because that will show that you are a true convert. Um, so it's, it's that simple. So the Jews of old, like especially the Pharisees and this and that, they try to obtain salvation through works. So that's why the Jews over in Israel now, the ones that aren't atheists, because there are a lot of atheist Jews that are over there, secular Jews, but the ones that are um, uh, in Judaism, or ones that practice Judaism, um, they don't accept Christ. They'll, they've called out certain groups will say vile, uh, vile, call him vile names. They'll cuss at him. They'll say he was this, that, and the other, and stuff that I'm not even going to repeat. Uh, their hatred for, for Jesus. But they claim that they still love God. Um, so they're still under the Old Testament, which is uh, the law, which nobody can be saved uh, from the law. We're saved by grace through faith. So that's why it's so important. But see, they don't want Christ to be the Savior, so that's why they deny him. Now, there are some Jews that accepted him. Like I said, there are some, uh, but very few. Let me pick up where I, where I left off. Um, it goes on in verse 32 says, why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. Now, I'm going to back up because this is talking about the uh, the Jews. The law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. The Jews did not succeed in reaching the law. And it says, why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. They didn't make per perfection or, or they didn't reach their goal because they were trying to, they weren't doing it by faith. The Bible pushes us having faith in God. But you have other groups that say, nope, if I sin, I'm going to sacrifice an animal or I'm going to do this, or look at me, I'm going to fast for three days, or I gave this amount of money. So you can't buy your way out of sin. You can't sacrifice yourself out of sin. You can't do it. So that's what they tried to do. So that's what Paul is talking about here. He says, why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as, as if it was based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written. Behold, I am laying... In Zion, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, of, of offense. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So it's saying believe in Christ, but I'm giving you a stumbling block. The stumbling block is the law because you can't get past it. You're going to continue to stumble on that block. So why am I bringing this up now? Because people still go back into like this Christian nationalism. A lot of that it still goes back to they're saying we need to pump money into Israel because Jesus is going to come back over there. So we have to make sure that it's secure and that there's no enemies on that land so that Jesus can come back. So they're saying <laughs> that the creatures, us, we have to step in and go over and wipe out a bunch of people because if not, Jesus won't be able to come back. 
So you're saying they're saying God doesn't have the strength or the power to come down and his will be done. So you see how idiotic, how, how idiotic that is. So that's kind of why I'm bringing this up. Uh, verse 10, I'm going to read a little bit of verse or chapter 10. Uh, it says, brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. Talking about Israel. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own did not submit to God's righteousness. He said they're trying to submit to their own and do things their way. That's not God's righteousness. This is Paul's talking here. It says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Simple, plain, point blank. Amen. And I just want to drop down real quick before I let you guys go here. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It didn't say if you sacrifice animals, you will be saved. It didn't say if you fast for a week that you will be saved. It didn't say if you give 10% of your tithe that you will be saved. It didn't say that you have to go to a deliverance ministry or you'll be saved or that you have to be healed by a, some faith healer or, and you will be saved or that you had to be baptized in order to be saved. It didn't say that. I'm reading it word for word here. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Uh, for with the heart one believes and is justified. From the heart one believes. So when you believe and you start following Christ, it's going to show because it's coming from the heart. And that's how we are justified. We're not saved unless we are justified. God declared us. It's a judicial statement that somebody's justified. It ain't nothing we did to make us justified. It's just we had faith and God says, okay, I'm going to give you a break. Here's a free gift. I'm going to justify you. It's that simple. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. Once again, no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all. So the same God that people are saying that these special people over in Israel have a special, uh, Paul is saying, no, we're all the same. He's the Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. He bestows his riches on all. What does all mean? All means all. That's all all means. Amen. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So like it goes back to say, if you believe in your heart, then there's going to be fruit from your actions. So if you believe in your heart that Christ was raised and that he is the Lord, uh, there's certain things you're going to not be doing. And it's not about works. It's just more or less. It's just something you're not going to be into. That's like saying, man, never mind. <laughs> My son says I, I give the worst example, so I was about to give a bad one. But all I'm saying is uh, whatever is in you is, is going to show. So how you how, what you believe uh, determines how you live your life. So just keep that in mind. That's why I always, you know, stress to you guys to have a biblical worldview on things. Don't look at things through the eyes of man, because then we're going to be like, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, but, you know, well, this and that. And it was a women's right. And, you know, I'm a, you know, what does God say? I don't care about politics. What does the Bible say? And I'm just going to leave it with that. So uh, therefore, if you have certain parties that are against certain nationalities, uh and who, who, who attack certain nationalities. What does that say about your heart? So I'm just going by what the Bible says. And I have to work out my own salvation. So I'm working on me and working on forgiveness. So that's what the Bible and what Paul and what God is uh, asking us to do. Let us close in prayer. Father, we just thank you uh, once again, Lord, for your word. Uh, we thank you again for another opportunity 
Father, I pray for those that are going through things right now, both physically and spiritually. I pray that you touch their hearts, their their, their bodies, uh, and guide them, Lord. And just uh, like we you said in, in, in Psalm 91, uh, like David said, you are a rock, our refuge. We relax and, and lie in you. Uh, so we just thank you for being our savior, uh, for being our refuge, Lord. We love you. We say this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You guys be blessed. Tell a friend. We'll see you back here Sunday, 10 o'clock. Amen. Be blessed.